Part C. They give us this function. We have to do some groundwork first, but a lot of the groundwork there, I just want you to look at part one and part two. I want you to notice how much we want you to get this question right. Can you tell, have, I, have we trained you well enough? Have Mrs. Lee's and I given you enough clues? When you look at it, can you see they show you where the turning point is and they even tell you what kind of turning point it is. They tell you there's a point of inflection. They don't even ask you to show that it's there. They just say, hey, there's a point of inflection there. It's because they're trying to get you toward part three, even if you can't, you know, do part one and two, you've got enough actually that's just been sort of, it's a running start, yeah? So let's just write down some brief notes for what you need to do so you don't panic, okay? Part one, show that f of x has a minimum turning point at, so what's the very first thing you need to do? We're not even gonna do the working, I just want the steps. You're gonna have to differentiate, right? When you differentiate, you're gonna to need to have at least two rules in your head. You're gonna use both of them when you differentiate these things. You're gonna need the product rule, and there's another one. Yeah, you're also gonna to have to use a very simple uh, version of the chain rule there for e to the x on two, okay? So you've got those pieces of knowledge, that's fine, okay? You're gonna get a derivative out of that. Whoops, right down here. What do you do with that derivative? What do you do with it? You're searching for a turning point, right? So where might turning points possibly occur? When the gradient is zero, right? So I'm going to say turning points, and I'm gonna say may, by the way, may occur when the derivative is zero. Whoops, when. By the way, not that it's that big a deal, but why do I say may? It could be a, a horizontal point of inflection, right? So that would not be a turning point, which is the thing that I'm looking for, okay? You're going to solve for that. You're gonna get an x value out, namely this. Are you done at that point? Are you finished? To get the two marks? Would you give two marks to a question, an answer rather, that stops there? You wouldn't, right? What's it missing? It's missing a couple things. Okay, I'm gonna to have to go and get that y value. Now they give you the y value, but it says, what's the word in the question that tells me I have to find it? Show, thank you very much. Right, they've given it to you, but you still have to actually evaluate and get this value out of your equation, okay? So now I've got an x value, I've got a y value. Am I done? What have I shown at this point? I've shown that at this point, f dash x equals zero. Do you have a minimum turning point yet? You do not. You have, you have a stationary point, but as Dominic pointed out, that could be a horizontal point inflection. So what has to happen next? One of two things. You've got to test it, right? Uh, and you've got two choices for how to test this. What are your two choices? First derivative, second derivative. Have a look at the function. Which would you use, or which did you use? When you differentiate this thing, right, it gets bigger because of product rule, and it's gonna get bigger again because of product rule. So I think rather than differentiating again, even though there's no quotient rule or anything like that, I'm gonna go first derivative. Do your neighborhood test, you find your minimum, now you're fine, okay? Yeah, it was a lot of work for two marks, but keep in mind, we gave you the answers, right? So now we're up to part two. Given that there's a point of inflection, Sketch the graph and all the features are there. Okay, I'm gonna rub this off. How are we going to piece this together? Draw yourself a set of axes if you haven't already. So, this is the only time out of the questions that I've pointed out that they actually told you to graph. So, it's gonna look something like this. That's a bit too low. Now, what are you gonna put on here? What are the two features you've already been told? I've got a stationary point, and it's a minimum. So one, two, three. You would put the coordinates onto this because you do know them. What's the other piece of information that I know about? Have a look, look, read the question. I'm not gonna read it for you. They hand you a piece of information, what is it? The point of inflection. Now they give you its coordinates on the page. It's at negative five, right? So it's over here. And if you actually evaluate, 
over there, you'll find it's just a tiny bit higher. But that makes sense, right? Why should it be higher, this point of inflection? Because it's a minimum that you're right next to. Okay? You're going to need a little bit of extra information. What else can you find? What else might be handy? When you're graphing, what are like important features? Intercepts are kind of handy. I'm pretty sure there's one at negative one. And I think, is it one? Yeah. yeah, okay. So you're getting a general shape here. Do you see what's going on? Okay. Now look again at the question. It lists out a whole bunch of things, right? That it says, hey, we want you to put this on. Stationary points, got those. Point of inflection, got that. Intercepts with coordinate axes, got that. What's the last thing it mentions? Asymptotes, how do you find asymptotes? You, you think about the limits as you approach those big values, positive infinity or negative infinity. What's happening in positive infinity? Look at the function. When you approach positive infinity, what happens to this thing? Well, this thing gets enormous, and this thing also gets enormous, so it just blows up. So there's no asymptotes happening there. What about on the other side? What happens when x gets really small? Sorry, really negative, I should say. This becomes negative infinity, but what does this become when x is really, really negative? It becomes really tiny. Now the question then becomes, well, which one wins? Which one wins? Hmm. So this is growing at a linear rate, right? But this is decreasing at an exponential rate. So which one takes over? The exponential is going to take over. And another way you can test this if your intuition is not enough is you've got a calculator there, right? Just throw a value in, negative 100, negative 1,000. Convince yourself that y equals 0 is going to be your horizontal asymptote. Okay? Can you see the picture yet? Can you trace it out in your mind? That's a bit weird. I passed through the um, horizontal asymptote. What's up with that? Can I do that? Absolutely I can, because the horizontal asymptote only matters at the extremities. In fact, in this case, it only really matters at one of the extremities, this one over here. I'm pretty sure I can see a shape. Can you see it? Here we go. Right, there we go. Done. Okay, you happy? So, they gave you a clue by naming all those features in the question itself. There is my graph. All features that are required are on there. Okay?